Hello, 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 Top Fan Rivalry followers. It is Bill and Jackson, and you're actually getting a chance to see us now because this is behind the locker room access um, <laughs> door. It's awesome. It's Thursday night. This is going to drop Friday morning so that you can hear us Friday morning and kind of just have that drive to work and watching us and Bo Jackson and I have faces for radio. We know it, but hey, we're gonna we're gonna survive anyways. Jackson, how are you doing tonight, mi amigo? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Good. So if you are if this is the first time behind the locker room door and you're not sure how this works or how this plays itself out, Jackson and I go through three different things that we think are important for the week. And obviously it's the off season, so it it sometimes can get a little sparse, but it can be a lot of fun too at the same time. So Jackson, why don't you lead us off with your first? What do you got going on? Well, living in Pennsylvania, I'm going to talk about uh, Brian Ritz possibly trading him. Uh, word has it that the Pirates offered him a six-year, $75 million extension, which I'm sure after he and his agent uh, were done laughing their heads off about the ridiculousness of that offer, uh, he asked for a trade. So the Pirates are kind of in the driver's seat here, having them in control until, what is it, 2026, 2027, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but obviously teams have come knocking, and the big, the big names on there are the Dodgers, the Yankees, I believe, the Red Sox, and then the new team today, the Texas Rangers, are all in on Brian Reynolds. But rumor has it that the, the haul they want, what, the Nationals kind of got for Juan Soto. So what what do you think, Bill? Would you trade your like four top prospects for Brian Reynolds? No. No. For four years of for four years of Brian Reynolds? No. No? No. no. And I'll tell you why. I know exactly because I, I read the same stuff that you read. In fact, you stole my first one, but I'll get over it. Okay. So no, I would not. And here's why <laughs> I would say that. Is because so for example the Dodgers I'm I'm sorry the the Yankees were talking with Brian Reynolds and they named four prospects that uh, Pittsburgh wanted and basically Pittsburgh is trying to spend no money in the off season and rebuild through prospects and basically make it so that prospects are going to come up and they're going to make the new Padres organization now you have to have some key components in there. Prospects aren't going to always do it. My my cat wants to join the the. There you go. Everybody gets to see my cat. So um, <laughs> that being said, I would not do it. Um, Brian Reynolds is good, um, but he's not great. And to give up four quality people, eh, too much. Too much. Would you do it? A career OPS, career OPS, career OPS at eight forty two. Generally a plus defender, switch hitter. In okay. twenty seven home runs last year on a terrible Pittsburgh team. Pittsburgh okay. isn't exactly a hitter's paradise, you know. Those are things to consider. Julio is happy with you now that you're mentioning uh, gangsters paradise and hitters paradise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, wouldn't, so. Jackson. I wouldn't. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't see that happening. And that's just me, but I, I'm. So if you're the GM of the Dodgers and you have yep. those three pitching prospects who are eternally log jammed right there, you wouldn't trade all three of them for Brian Reynolds? Nope. No? Wow. Nope. And so, in fact, I had heard rumblings, and you know how I feel, Jackson, about rumors. Right? <laughs> you, you know how I feel about rumors. Um, I will tell you right now, <laughs> mm, 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 mm. I heard what they were asking for from the Dodgers, and there's no way in sin I would give that up. No way. No way, no way, no way. Um, but, I mean, again, Brian Reynolds is above average. He's not a Hall of Famer. And if oh, you're no. going to ask me for my four best prospects out there, eh, you might be asking a little much. Right. You know, yeah. and so it, it, it'll be in, it'll be interesting because Texas 
their top three prospects are all pitching prospects, and they seem to like they want to go all in. Mm-hmm. So this could potentially be, according to you, a disastrous trade. If I was Texas, I wouldn't trade my top pitching prospects because you have like five injury prone pitchers in that rotation. That's just not a good yeah. idea. Yeah, exactly. But, it it is something to consider though if you're a team like the Yankees, you know, and the the Pirates from the Yankees are only asking for what is it, Jason Dominguez? Mm-hmm. What was the uh, Jason Dominguez? There top was pitching prospect, which isn't even that good. They were asking for three uh, other players, I thought, or maybe two other players. I mean, you give up one of Peraza or Volpe, you probably don't give them up both of them up because they both play the same position, and then. And their top pitching prospects, which I mean, are in the low. I think one's in the low nineties, and the other one's not even ranked in the top one hundred. I mean, I'd pull the trigger on that trade if I was the Yankees. They're they're that desperate for a left-handed bat, <laughs> a good yeah. left-handed bat. Well, they they've got a good. The Yankees got a good left-handed bat. Well, they need another one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've got a great first baseman that when he connects, he does a lot of good things. So yeah, when he connects, I, I mean, uh, you know, or, yeah, anyways, but I, I actually think I know what the pirates are doing and it makes sense. They don't have the cash that they want to toss around. They don't want to toss around a $400 million 13 year deal with somebody, but they're, they're willing to give up their best player for, you know, some very good prospects. It makes sense. I just think they're asking for everything. And and again, Brian Reynolds. All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean you got you gotta look at the pirates. So they're planning on being good in like three years. Mm-hmm. That's why that's why they're trying to do this. So I yeah. mean prime O'Neill Cruz, prime Cabrian Hayes, uh their top catching prospect, Henry Davis looks like a stud. You know, they're hoping those three guys hit their stride and then they can gather enough major league talent around them so it's not they're not just wasting them right right well and and my yeah yeah we're gonna i mean my debate is that you you just you you can't you can't just give away like that you can't give away too much so um but that's a good first one that's a great lead off jackson i like that i like that all right. My lead off. Are you ready? Yeah. Who, what team has been signing everybody this offseason? The Mets. No. Signing everybody? Hmm. They're on the West Coast. Oh, the Padres? <laughs> Padres. Right. They've been signing everybody. They, Matt Carpenter, they signed. So, guess who they signed this week? But they signed Nelson Cruz, did they not? They signed Nelson Cruz. <laughs> so so you got Matt Carpenter, who's not going to play the outfield because you've got seven outfielders already for three positions. Um, so you got Matt Carpenter out there. That's probably going to be your DH. Now you just hired a full-time DH. I'm not understanding what the Padres are doing. I think what the Padres are doing is they're trying to play um, little brother scenario and making sure that the Dodgers and the Mets can't get everybody, so they're going to grab them. <laughs> so I have no idea what Nelson Cruz is going to do for them, uh, but you know, you, you just you know, full time DH. I, I made this joke at work today to one of my coworkers. I, I'm going to say they signed Nelson Cruz to to provide Fernando Tatis with some PEDs, but yeah, <laughs> to do well, it right. What I think is funny. About <laughs> Sorry, that's thing. terrible. No, 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 it's fine. What I think is funny about this, Jackson, is that Fernando Tatis may not be strong enough to be an everyday outfielder, an everyday infielder. He may have to DH. You just signed a freaking DH. Why did you do that? It makes no sense, but whatever. Yeah, it it, it seems like the Padres are going, if you have all the depth, you know, if somebody plays bad, you can just kind of bench them. Right. I don't know how. I don't know how effective that's going to be, but we'll we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Right. All right. Who you got up for number two? 
I mean, I bet you're not expecting this one, but the Athletics signed a player. Woo! I know. A's fans rejoice. The front office did something. They signed Shintaro Fujinami. Bless you. What did you say? <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, uh, he's coming over from the Japanese League, the NPB. So, he was drafted in the same class as Shohei Otani. He started off really hot in the, the Japanese League, and then he's had control issues the last couple of years. Okay. But the guy's got a career three and a half ERA. He throws 100 miles an hour. It, the, the worry is where the 100 miles an hour is going to end up. He's got a devastating splitter and slider. I think this is kind of a, you know, one of those situations where not a lot of teams were offering on him, and he chose the West Coast team. Yeah. And he's going to Oakland. You know, he'll be successful. He'll be an electric fastball against splitter. You know, a good breaking ball. It, it's yeah. just going to be that command. Major, the major leagues differentiates from the Japanese league where you get punished a lot more for walks and major league baseball, just because there's more home runs, you know, you can get away with it when, when teams are single and doubling you to death, you know, you know, maybe you walk a guy and they hit a double and you're able to strand it, but you know, you walk a guy and you give up a two run home run. All of a sudden you're like, Oh geez. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, upper nineties heater that touches a hundred and he, he's six foot six. So nice, big power pitcher. So I'm excited to see him, even if, you know, you know, a lot of people have a lot of bad things to say about players from Japan, but I think it's good that more players are coming over from Japan, you know, to play in the U S because baseball is a global game. Now it's great to have people, you know, that bring different philosophies on how to play the game. They play the game a little different. I think it helps grow the sport and it makes the sport better. I agree. I agree. I didn't realize that they signed him. I knew who he was because I've read some stuff about how tall of a pitcher he is. And there's, you know, when you're a tall pitcher, you have a strategic advantage, right? Because you have a longer stride. And so you're not letting go of the ball from 60 feet, six inches away. You might be letting go of the ball at 58 feet away, right? It depends on your stride or 59 feet. So they have a strategic advantage. So I've read about him, but I didn't realize the A's actually pulled the trigger, which good for them. He'll never get run support this year. <laughs> but but again, it's a, it's a it's a one year contract. It kind of seems like you know he he's out here to prove it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then he'll go to the Yankees, Mets, Dodgers, Phillies, someplace yeah, I, next season. I I I expect him if he. So. Yeah. All right. Do you know who my number two is? We got to talk about the elephant in the room. My number two is arguably one of the most hated men in baseball currently, or at least one of the most hated agents in baseball currently. Um, Carlos, I am now a twin, Correa, dot, 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 again. And so so if you're a Dodger fan, you already hated Carlos Correa because of the 2017 World Series. If you're a Mets fan or Giants fan, you're not a happy camper with this dude. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, he got paid. He went back to Minnesota. I I wonder why Minnesota was so excited to take him back. Frankly, frankly, Jackson, it almost feels like, oh, so we're your last option. I mean, okay. I have a thought about it. So, Go. the deal's for six years, 200 mil, only 200 million is guaranteed, right? Right. Whatever. All right. And it can go up to 275 with vesting options and all that complicated contract stuff we don't understand. Bottom line is, if he plays, he gets paid. So if yeah. you're the Twins, you know, this is your biggest free agent contract in history. But think about it. You signed him on a three-year deal for, what, like $130 million? Mm -hmm. you, you basically slash payroll by, like, $10 million. <laughs> and you, yeah. You're bringing him back, you know, Best case scenario, nothing's wrong with his leg, and you, you yep. get the guy you wanted all along. Worst case scenario, if he gets hurt and you just eat the money, and you know thirty million dollars in this baseball economy is is nothing apparently. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, and so my my thing is is baseball but is the Twins need a go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, the Twins need another big bopper to hit behind Byron Buxton when he's healthy. 
That's the bottom line. They're kind of in this contend now mode. Which well, is, keep is in questionable. Mind too, yeah. It's questionable, but keep in mind too, they brought over Joey. I can't find a jersey that fits me Gallo. Without the shift, you know, in place, who knows what Joey does. So now you got Byron, you got Joey, and you got Carlos, and maybe they're making a run at it. Who knows? Yeah. The the big question mark for them is, is the starting pitching. Yeah. I mean yeah. you can say it, you can say that about a lot of teams. If you don't pitch well, you don't play well. Doesn't matter yeah. how good your lineup is. You can be the nineteen twenty seven Yankees, but you know, if you're throwing uh you know, the Weaver brothers, sorry to throw Jared Weaver on the bus. I know you had a couple of good seasons, but if you're throwing the Weaver brothers at the end of their career out there like the Angels were for a couple of years, you know, throwing eighty six mile an hour batting practice, you know, five runs six runs of support's not enough. <laughs> right. So right. So my thing with Carlos Correa is this, right? We're all human, right? These athletes are human. They're very human. They're very, very human. So what happens when you have the dog days, right? And now every team plays every team. So what happens when you're in the dog days of summer? It's hot. It's humid. It's sticky. It's yucky, right? And this guy goes four for 47, which will happen to every hitter at some point, right? And then he's got an East Coast swing where he's got to go. I mean, I'm sorry, a West Coast swing where he goes to L.A. And then after that, the Twins go to to the Giants. He's going to get booed in L.A. He's going to get booed in San Francisco. And when you're on a four for 47 slump, mentally, that's going to get to you. So does that drag it out more or does that do you lace up your bootstraps and say, let's do it. I'm going to prove these guys wrong. And. Equally as as much as the game is physical, it's mental. So I wonder what Carlos Correa has done to the mental capacity of the game going forward for him. Does that make sense, or did that not make any sense at all? No, it it makes sense, and it's the mental ass players. You'll see when they're four for forty seven, they still have really good at bats. You know when. I'm going to use Freddie Freeman as an example because I watched him for years with the Braves, and I'm sure you watched it last year with the Dodgers. Even when he's not hitting well necessarily, he goes up there and he makes those at-bats count. He goes seven, eight pitches. You know, Even though he strikes out, he, he fouls off a ton of pitches. He he has really good takes. Maybe he hits the ball right at someone you know, camped in right center field, and he hits it at like 125 miles an hour, and he, you know, a guy can't catch a break. But he, he's up there putting in some baseball. From, you know, the really mediocre players in baseball, the really mediocre players in baseball, when they're on a slide, will go up, maybe see, maybe see five pitches. They usually see three or four and they go down one, two, good morning, good evening, good night, you yeah. know, and strike yeah. out and they're back on, they're back to the bench. And it's, it's yeah. that mental aspect. It's going up there, knowing that even though you don't have a hit, you're not pressing for it. You're just going to play your game. Mm-hmm. You're a professional. You've been there before, you know, As... you hit baseball for a living. <laughs> As our good friend Yogi would say, 90% of the game is half mental. Yeah. So I just, I think it's interesting. And I hope that Korea doesn't struggle. I don't want anybody to ever struggle. But, you know, everybody goes through a slump every now and again. And what happens if it's right during a time where he's got to go through a West Coast swing or go over to the Mets or whatever, right? It's just all kinds of crazy. Yeah, it's just all kinds of crazy. So it is. Anyways, that's my number two. Jackson, what do you got for number three? Number three. You know what? This is my second Pennsylvania shout out of the night. Uh, I will talk about I will talk about the Phillies for the Phillies fans. You know, they acquired two time all star closer Gregory Soto from the Tigers for basically nobody. This, This trade kind of baffles me on the Tigers end. But, you know, Gregory Soto at his best is a shutdown closer at his worst uh duck That's you know true. he's one of those pitchers and my my whole take on the trade is he's another Jose Alvarado if you can get him to pitch like Jose Alvarado down pitch down the stretch for the Phillies and you have Jose Alvarado pitching lights out like that Gregory Soto pitching lights out like that as a Braves fan it's going to be annoying because two power lefties like that can you know neutralize the good left-handed bats that Atlanta has the good left-handed bats that New York has, good left-handed bats that the Dodgers have. So I think it's a good move for the Phillies. It's one of those really high-risk, high-reward gambles that they're taking. But, you know, it it's very in theme for the city of Philadelphia to go for, you know, go for the big move like this. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's very, uh, it is very apropos to that. Yes, I agree. And so, yeah, Philly, Philly's going to be competitive this year between the Braves, the, the Phillies and the Mets. You're going to see a lot of competitiveness. So it should be fun. There's, it's going to be great. A lot of, a lot of good baseball. I'm excited for baseball season to start. They, you they, and me they both. Really, they released the spring training schedule, guys. It's it's happening. It's almost here. We're almost exactly, there. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. My last one is one that may shock you. But at last, we can put this to bed. Trevor Bauer is finally given his unconditional release from the Dodgers. He is free to sign with any other team free to sign with any other organization, knock yourself out TV. Good luck. Wish you all the best. Um, as somebody pointed out in a live that I recently did, Trevor had trouble on his high school team. He had trouble on his college team. He had trouble with the reds, with the Indians and now with the Dodgers. So it may be a pattern. It may not be, it may be a pattern, but I was talking to a fan this morning on a podcast um, and, uh, you know, she, we didn't talk about it on the actual podcast, but offline. And, you know, she's a West Coast fan of a team that's not the Dodgers. Um, and I asked her, I said, would you want Trevor Bauer on your team? And she said, absolutely not. And it's the image that he portrays right now. He doesn't want anything to do with it. And so finally you, you put that to bed and now he can go shopping with the other 29 teams. Maybe somebody offers him a contract. Maybe they don't. But here's my question for you, Jackson. Okay. You ready? I am. Okay. Does Trevor Bauer now become, in a very different sense, but now does he become kind of the Colin Kaepernick of Major League Baseball in the sense that though he violated MLB's uh, contract with, uh, you know, sexual abuse, though he wasn't found, you know, there wasn't enough to go to trial with, he wasn't court of law, that type of thing. But does the MLB make an example out of him? Yeah, I mean, think? I think I think you can compare him almost to Barry Bonds, because okay. Barry Bonds was in a similar situation, was it not? Where he was, you know, I was he. I don't know if he was convicted of perjury or lying on the stand. I don't know. I played a couple more seasons, but the owners got together and said, "Let's not sign Barry Bonds because of the baggage." You know, and Major League Baseball teams care about their image. Most Major League Baseball teams. I'm going to preface this. And going into my next point, if you're a team like the Oakland A's and you don't have anyone showing up to the ballpark anyways, and you're trying to move to Las Vegas, wouldn't you take a gamble on Trevor Bauer to maybe flip him at the deadline if he plays well enough where everyone's kind of forgotten? Mm. The problem the problem with – and I get your point, right? And you could say the same thing about KC. You could say the same thing about – Colorado, you could say the same thing about the Arizona Diamondbacks, who he's already played for. By the way, he had problems there, too. Um, you could say the same thing about the Pittsburgh Pirates. You could say the same thing about teams that aren't competing, right? So my argument would be, then it becomes, hey, Trevor Bauer and the Oakland A's are coming to town. He becomes the the known name of the franchise as they're you know traveling. Whereas right now with the Braves, you're a Braves fan. Right now, there's nobody that they say Ronald Acuna comes to town with the Braves because you got Michael Harris. You've got a number of different other players that are very effective. Dodgers are the same thing. You don't hear them say Freddie Freeman's coming to town, right? Um, because you got Mookie Betts, you got Will Smith, yeah. you got Clayton Kershaw. I don't know that that's a good thing for a franchise. I think in, in certain senses, I think he needs to be able to sit in the background and nobody talk about it. But I don't know. I mean, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting argument. But, you know, you got to think if he has something in the tank, you know, you know, professional sports are all about money mm -hmm. and about winning. So 
I don't think it would be outrageous for a team to go sign him. I personally, as a GM, wouldn't sign him just because then you have to sit there and answer a bunch of questions about it. It's a hassle. Yeah. You're not getting you're some some questions you can dodge when you when you're in charge of a baseball team. You can kind of just ignore them and just say next question. But when you do something as controversial as this, <laughs> you cannot say next question without causing a stir. Yeah. So I agree with you. I think we might let's not touch him. He might have to go play overseas for a couple of years. He might not even pitch in the MLB again. It's a situation where it's not very common that it happens in the MLB, but, you know, we have seen MLB players, you know, get suspended for domestic abuse, suspended for steroids, you know, and they come back and they play. So it will be an interesting storyline. I'm not going to say to follow because I don't really care as long as he doesn't sign with the Braves. I, I, I don't want him. So, if, if, the, if the Braves sign him, I'm going to buy tickets when I'm in California this spring at Petco Park to sit behind the dugout to throw something at Trevor. No, I'm just kidding. I won't throw <laughs> anything at him. To heckle Trevor Bauer. Okay, top fan rivalry followers, we're raising money for Jackson's bail. Um, we'll put something up on the <laughs> website for Jackson's bail. It'll be called the, the, the JWB Fund, the Jackson Westfall Bail Fund. Just, just and, like like Ferris Bueller's Day Off instead of Save Ferris, it's going to be Save Jackson. Save Jackson. <laughs> um, the only way that, and again, I don't know Trevor. I don't know the circumstances. I don't know the owners of these teams. They don't call me and ask me for advice. Um, I personally, Jackson, think the only way that he plays in the MLB this season, the only way that he plays in the MLB this season is if, at the trade deadline, there's a team that just needs a little extra push to get him over the hump to get into the playoffs, i.e. the Orioles, the Rays, um, maybe Toronto. the White Sox, maybe the Guardians. Well, the Guardians won't do it, but, um, you know, something like that where it's just a little a, – they just need that extra push to get them over. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like we so, said, it's all, it's all about winning. I personally – wouldn't sign him. Ten out of ten would heckle from the stands. Wouldn't wouldn't want him to play for my team. But you know, I I think you're right. I think come play come playoff push time, there's going to be a team. You know, pitch pitching's hard to find. You know, and Trevor Bauer at his best is an above average pitcher. You know, and at his worst, he's a league average pitcher, which is a really good floor to have, <laughs> especially yep. if you're a contending team. If at worst he's going to be league average, you'll take that every night. So exactly, exactly. But it's just one of those things where to me and, and I hate, you know, I'm I'm just glad that this drama is over um, because now it's up to the ownerships. Right. They can choose whether they want to grab them or not. Like you just said, I've had talks with now Braves fan, you Padres fans, Dodger fans. Um, I've had talks with Astros fans. I've had talks with uh an A's fan, not A's fan, I'm sorry, a Giants fan, none of them want Trevor Bauer on their team because of the persona that he brings with him, right? And so, and he's got to be careful too. He can't walk off the mound going, you know, like this or strutting off the mound or anything. He's got to be like the super best model citizen in the MLB. <laughs> yeah. And I just don't think he gets there. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So, anyways. Well, Jackson, we made it through another weekly review. Is there any side notes or any things that you want to still cover? I mean, baseball season's coming up. Baseball season's so, coming up. Why don't you guys get stylish, hop on the team store, check out some hats. You can look mm -hmm. stylish at the ballpark like I do when I go to baseball games. It's yes, cool you do. Hat, rivalry hat. You know, the, it comes in a lot of different colors to match, your, match the jersey of your team of choice. Yes. So give it a look. You know, and, uh, you know, I'm excited to do another one of these next week. I am too. And Jackson, is there a code for anything like that? Do they need a code? Oh, use, use code Jackson. It, it gets you 10% off. Gets you 10% off your hat, off your cozy, off your T-shirt. Off your T-shirt, off your locker room access, whatever it is. Use that code Jackson. Um, and for you top the fans that are listening to this that are behind the locker room door, you already know this. Okay, because you're already behind the locker room door. 
but tell a friend to use that code. What you're going to see behind the locker room door, even during the season, is at least one article from me a week, at least one article from a top fan, rivalry follower a week. You're going to see Jackson and I do the weekly review. You're going to see Sam and I do the Around the Diamond, all for 36 bucks minus 10%, right? And so you're going to get a ton of fan access behind here. So get up on it. There's no reason why we shouldn't get up on it. So um, we appreciate you. Use code Jackson. And I appreciate Jackson being on tonight. I, I love doing this with him because he's our, and he goes by top fan stats guy on Instagram. So follow him too. Um, during the season, I'm sure he'll have some more stats to put up and things like that. If there's, a stat that you're interested in and Jackson can't find it, then it's not a real stat. It didn't happen. That's all I'm going to say. I, all or, you, Jackson. Or, or you're one of those people that, yeah, you know, spends a lot more time reading about baseball stats than I do. And if you do that, tip my hat to you. Yeah, there you go. You got to tip the hat. Exactly. All right, Amigo. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much, Top Fan Rivalry followers, for listening to us. Next week, we'll have some different backgrounds. We'll have some more stuff to talk about. Um, heck, we might even throw in a, a couple of quiz things where you can win some Top Fan Rivalry gear, if you'd like, uh, through the, the Q&A portion. So, Jackson, let's do it again next week. All right. Sounds good. All right. Talk to you later, my friend. Talk to you later.